live from Brooklyn. It's Monday night. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd love to introduce the crew to you here. And first off, from Columbus, Ohio, we have Mr. Donald Culp. Hello, everybody. Let's see. Uh, and then we have Chris Ray, just down the street from me in uh, Connecticut. Hello. And of course, you have me back in Brooklyn, dodging the whizzing bullets and sitting at traffic lights and laughing when people give me the finger. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I don't know how this, I'm going to edit this part of this out. I don't know how this is going to come out. When I highlight Don or Chris, nothing shows up on my screen. Hmm. So it, it may be that you won't be able to see Don when he's teaching, but um, he's a great passionate teacher and I love him. So he's going to teach tonight. So Don, take it away. All right. Take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41. My wife, Kim, verse in the Bible and she just she liked it so much she wrote it down and I said oh wow that's a really cool verse let me make it a little bigger for you so you can see it from the refrigerator so anyways this is how it goes it says in Isaiah 41 verse 13 for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. Of course, my little analytical brain started churning, and I'm going, okay, here the Bible says, do not fear. Okay, now, other places, uh, like uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, it says, Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Well, why would he tell us to fear God in one place and in some place else say, fear not? All the angels, he's always uh, said, fear not. So what's the deal? Why is it the whole duty of man to fear God in one place and then not to fear God in another place? Well, it's kind of like... Uh, the parent-child relationship. The, the child has only one responsibility, to obey their parents. If they don't obey their parents, what happens? They receive the wrath of their parents. <laughs> and it's kind of similar from uh, the point of view of God, only it's uh, when the Bible says fear is the beginning of wisdom, it's because if you do not do what God asks you to do, then you should be afraid that you might miss out on something. It's kind of like the airport. If you uh, have a healthy respect for the airport, that when they say the airplane is going to depart at 12.05, if you're there at 12.06, guess what? You better be afraid because you're going to miss that plane. <laughs> Words have meanings. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes they have more than one meaning, you know, like the word bark. Uh, in the context of dogs, that means it's the sound a dog makes. But if you're out in the woods, it could mean the side of a tree, so but it's the same word. So context means a lot. But in this verse, God says, uh, I am the Lord. I am Yahweh, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. I will help you. What a wonderful promise. 
to latch hold of and to keep between your ears and in the front of your mind all times during the day. Isn't that something? Fear not. God bless you. Well, thank you, Mr. Don. That was incredible. Thank you. And, uh, okay. Well, I'm going to share a little bit of the word with you, too. Let me bring this uh, up here. Um... That is not what I wanted. <laughs> okay. Let's do it from here then. So, um, documents. Okay. Let me just let me just get this set up. Okay. Guys, if you highlight me, you'll see what I'm reading. <coughs> got it. There. Got it? Yes. Click yep. okay. All right, this is, when I first got into TLTF, I had a problem, and it was about this. We were talking about our problems tonight, Christine, when we, you know, had to switch our thinking. Well, this is one of the things that bugged me, so I did a teaching on it. To, I'm going to do a teaching on it tonight. And there were three words that seemed to cause no end of confusion in the word of God. They are trust, faith, and belief. Now, if you translate from one language to another, it can get very confusing. If I say two, do I mean two as in T-O, two as in T-O-O, -O, or T-W-O? It depends on the context and the content of the sentence it's used in. Mark, does it mean a, a thing on a paper or does it mean Mark, my friend? It can be determined by the sentence. You can see why many times there is confusion because of the way the words are used. Okay. In English, sometimes it is this, it is determined by if is the word a noun, is the word a verb, or some other kind of word like a preposition, an adjective, a gerund, uh, you know, all these different kinds of words. Let's start here with the word of trust and see how Webster defines it. Okay. Okay, definition of trust. Assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, and truth of someone or something. One which is confidence is placed. A dependence on something. You know, you can go through. You can look this up on uh, Webster'sDictionary.com. And here are some cinnamon, synonym, synonyms. Synonyms. I'm going to have some cinnamon buns. Okay, synonyms. Confidence, credence, faith, stock, acceptance, assurance, assuredness, certainty, certitude, conviction, positiveness, sureness, and, you know, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And the antonyms are distrust and mistrust. A number of business enterprises used it for commercial advantage. Government lawyers argued, blah, 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 blah. You can see all this. What I want to get down to is this, for this part right here. The word trust is a noun. That means it is something, not somewhere you take an action. 
It is something, not some, not where you take an action. Okay, let's look at it from the Word. This is just a few times from the Word of God. In 2 Samuel 2, 3 the God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield, my horn, my salvation, my high tower, and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. All right, and this is this is the shield he's talking about. <coughs> this is actually a shield and a buckler. Right, we get into that in the next verse. As you can see, these are weapons as well as a shield. In 2 Samuel 22, 31, it says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. So this, the sword attached to it, and... Uh, Oops. These with the little protrusions right, right there. Those are bucklers. And when you were in battle, you'd have your sword in one hand and the shield with the buckler in your other hand. And you could be using that shield as an offensive weapon as well as for protection. So the shield of believing. It's not just a defensive weapon, it is an offensive weapon as well. There's something to think about. We keep talking about how the sword is the real weapon, but the shield of believing, if it has a buckler with it, is also a weapon. Second Samuel 22, 31. As for God, oh, I, I read that to you. God's way is perfect. Sometimes when God gives us direction, it may seem crazy wrong at the time. Jonah. Let's look at Jonah for a minute. God told Jonah, Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarnish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to tarnish so he paid the fare thereof and went down into the to go with him to tarnish from the presence of the lord and we all know how that turned out well here just so you get an idea of what we're talking about none of us right over here in this area i can't highlight it tarnish is way over here in spain that's Assyria. that's spain you can't get further away from uh, Nineveh than Tarnish. So he, he was not doing what God said to do. In fact, he was doing as much as he could to go in the opposite direction. You can see they're on opposite sides of the Mediterranean. Look at this. Res now look at this response. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, here am I, Lord. And that's what you got to do. You got to be ready to. The Lord calls you. You say, Here I am, Lord. Let's do it. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. And behold, he prayeth. And he hath seen a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Okay. So he got the instructions from God. Let's see how he responds. And Ananias said, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Excuse me, how much he had done to this, this saint at Jerusalem? And he hath the authority from the chief priest to bind all that call upon your name. 
Well, God tells him, go! And we know he goes and the minute ministers to Paul, who gets his sight back and goes on to write most of the Greek scriptures. Now, back to Jonah, Jonah for just a minute. Jonah knew there was a prophecy that Nineveh would overrun Israel. And he thought if he didn't go, it might happen. <coughs> or it might not happen. He That Nineveh would be so corrupt that God would, you know, come down on Nineveh. Like he did on Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, so did he go? Did he? Well, he did go, and they changed their ways and repented. And several years later, Israel got overrun. At times, it's hard to do what God wants us to do. We just may have to trust what God says. And I'd like to finish up trust with one of my favorite verses it's used in Proverbs 3 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. It can be very hard at times to do what God says to do. At times it can be very easy. This is because trust is built. Every time I do something that God says to do, that trust in God is built. If you have never done that, ask God for something to do. But I will say as a warning, don't be surprised when he tells you to do this. If you do what he says, it builds your trust and confidence in the Lord. If you don't, well, that's a different boat. You won't go there. There's one more thing. There are several words translated trust, each having its own meaning. There are nine Hebrew words, Hebrew and Aramaic, and there are six Greek words. This, of course, requires a great deal of work that you can follow up with. It can be difficult to translate some words. In, there are Greek and Hebrew words that are almost impossible to translate because there is no English word it could be like when God said to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. That word, dead, is the most intense word in the Bible. There is no way to accurately translate it. It is, it is as if God was shouting at it so it would resound through the whole earth. Why, you may ask, was God doing that. Well, Joshua was sitting there thinking, man, I got to follow Moses. How am I going to do that? Think about that. You, you got to follow Moses. You're the next leader after Moses. Moses led the children of Israel for 40 years in, in the desert. And they learned that, you know, Moses and God had a real relationship. And that Moses was connected. And they, they came to the point of trusting Moses finally, I think, someplace along the line. All right. Next, faith. Um, allegiance to duty. Or a person, yada yada yada. Yeah, I'm going to put up the link to my. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I'm sucking on a cough drop to avoid this, but it's not quite working. I'll put it in the link to the uh, my um, blog. There we go. I'm getting old. It's hard to remember words sometimes. Blog. And uh, you can go over this and see it a little better. Faith, again, is a noun. It's a thing. 
Faith is not used very much in the Hebrew scriptures or in the Greek many times. Many times it would be better to be translated faithfulness, hope, trust. It generally leads to confusion, especially since religion has gotten in and muddied up the meanings of the words even more. Faith does not mean we blindly accept things that are ridiculous to begin with, such as Friday at about 6 p.m. to sunrise is, on Sunday is three days and three nights. There is a three-in-one wrench theory that is another thing we are told we must blindly accept on faith. Don't try and make God look like a fool. Just because so many religious types say we have to accept it on faith. The word Trinity is never used in the Bible once. It is a word that men made up. The same thing with God the Son. Son of God appears many times, but God the Son never. It's another made up term, made up by men. If it was true, it would be in the Word, because God says in His Word, it has all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And damn it, if this was true, this would be a little bit important to know, and God would have said it someplace. This is why many people don't listen to Christians. They think they're idiots because they make no sense with good cause because they don't. Therefore, Romans 5.1, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been justified by faith. Our trust in what God accomplished in Jesus Christ and what he did and the promise which God made. And let's look at that promise as we switch into uh, belief. Um, promise is in uh, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Because if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, Jesus is the Lord and you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified, and with the mouth, confession is, with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. That's from the NIV, or the ESV. And I, I tend too much to uh, think in terms of the uh, King James, because I was one of the people who was raised on the King James, there's no denying that. I was raised on the King James, so a lot of times that's where my heart goes back to. Doesn't mean it's any better, just means it's what I'm used to. We have trust or faith in the promise made. We take action and believe and are saved. How do I know it's that simple? Because of what Ephesians says. Ephesians 2.5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are you saved. <clears throat> and 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace are you saved, through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God has to do this at times because men tend to think of themselves as God. Remember Gideon? He was, take, he was taking on an enemy and God says, ah, you got too many men. And he reduced the army, the size of Gideon's army force from thousands down to 300. Because he knew if he didn't, men would get puffed up and say it was us. Gideon trusted the promise of God and believed what God said to him to do, and he took the action and believed and defeated their enemy. Remember Naaman. Naaman, he wanted to get healed. He wanted healing. And he went to Elijah, and he got a promise and the action he needed to take the believing. 
he did that, which he was told to do eventually, <laughs> and he was healed. After he took the action of believing, always believing always means action taken based upon the trust of what God has said. That's the difference between trust and believing. Believing is action taking on the trust you have in what God has told you. One last example of believing. And here it's all tied up in a bow in one verse. Just one simple verse. John 7, 9, 7. And he said, go, go, wash in the pool of Siloam, <laughs> which is being interpreted sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Okay, Jesus gave the promise. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. And the blind man trusted or had faith in what Jesus had said to do. He took the action. He believed by taking the action of washing, and he received his sight. My heart leaps with joy when I read records like this sometimes. I will well up with tears because the blind saw. Who else but God could pull that one off? He'll do the same for us. <coughs> We find the promise. We build our faith. And you can do that according to Jude one twenty. We take the action God has said to take either by reading from the word or by revelation. I want to close by really looking at John 9. We're going to go through the whole chapter. Jesus heals the man born blind. And he went along and he saw a blind man from his birth. And his disciples asked, Rabbi, who said that this, this man or his parents that he was born blind? Well, that's a stupid, to us that sounds like a stupid question. How could he have sinned? Well, you see, they believed in reincarnation. Nobody said they were perfect. <laughs> they believed in reincarnation. So they were saying, did this man... Um, sin or did his parents sin that he was born blind and then jesus gives the most awesome answer and that that's always the way it is you get these awesome answers neither this man nor his parents sin jesus said but this happened so that the works of god might be displayed in him in other words jesus is saying guys you're asking the wrong question it's not who sinned it's what the, what are we going to do about this as long as it is day, we must do the works of him that sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And guess what? In this day and age, we are the light of the world. So as long as we're in this world, we're supposed to be being the light of this world. We're supposed to be holding forth the word of God. We're supposed to be confronting uh people and taking them from their fears to believe in God. Okay, let's go on. Let me get off my soapbox here. We'll never get finished. Ah, this thing is fighting with me. Okay. Okay, after, after saying this, he spit on the ground and made some mud with his saliva and put it on the man's eyes. And he said, go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and he was washed and he came home seeing. He came home seeing. Can you imagine what was going on in this man's heart? He was born blind. And suddenly he can see. And we know he was at least 30 years old. We'll get to that. His neighbors who had formerly seen him begging asked, Is this the same man who sat and begged? 
And some of them claim that it, he was, that he was. Others said, no, it only looks like him. Oh. Sorry, folks. Okay. But he himself insisted, I am the man. I'm the guy you guys are talking about. How then were your eyes open, they asked. And he replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it in my eyes. And he told me to go pull a sign along and wash. So I went and washed it. And I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know. Remember, he had been blind. Jesus could have been standing right in front of him and he wouldn't have known it. The Pharisees investigate the healing. Oh, they brought the Pharisees to the man who had been healed. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the eyes of the man was a Sabbath day. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked how he received his sight. He put mud in my eyes, the man replied, and washed, and now I see. And some of the Pharisees this said, this man is not from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. And we know we're supposed to keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath is more important than man. But doesn't it say someplace in the word, word that Jesus said, man was not made for the Sabbath, or the, man was made for the Sabbath. Or the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. It was not a unanimous thing going on here. I mean, don't forget there are guys around like uh, um, the first Jewish rabbi, Nicodemus, uh, <laughs> or the... Yeah, the first Irish, um, first Irish priest, Nick Odemus. So they were divided. And they turned again unto the blind men and said, What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He's a prophet. They still did not believe him that he had been blind. And had received the sight until they sent for the man's parents. Now they're bringing in the parents. They brought in the neighbors. They brought in the heads of the, the religion. Now they're bringing in his parents. They're bringing in everybody but the cat. Is this your son, they asked? Is this the one you say was born blind? How can he see? Uh, we know this is our son, the parents answered. And we know he was born blind, but how he can now see, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. That shows a lot of guts on the parents' part. Their son had just had his eyes open. If he's of age, he's at least 30 years old. He was born blind. He'd been blind for thir at least 30 years. And his parents said, ask him. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who acknowledged Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he is of age, ask him. You know, that, that really is low. I could not... If somebody healed one of my kids, I would be so thankful and grateful to him. I wouldn't care what they decided. <coughs> I wouldn't care. I'd just thank him. <coughs> A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. And he, the man who was healed of the blindness, replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. The one thing I know is I was blind 
and now I see. But they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? Boy, they really, they really want to know this. How did he, he do this? He answered, I have told you already. You did not listen. Why don't you, why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? And they hurled insults at him and said, you are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't know even where he comes from. The man answered, that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from. Yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of the opening of the eyes of a man born blind. If a man were not of God, he could, not, he could do nothing. And there is a scripture in Isaiah. I should have looked this up. Don, do you remember what it is? No, I don't. Okay, there's a scripture in Isaiah that says uh, the Savior would open the eyes of a blind man, man born blind. That had never happened before. It has happened since, again, but it had never happened before this. To this, they were replied, they, the Pharisees replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. And the next thing is called spiritual blindness, which is absolutely the truth. And Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. When he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you, have see you now see him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, the three greatest words, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who will see will become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard him say that, and this they asked, what, are we blind too? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim that you can see, your guilt remains. Lord, I trust and believe in you. So that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. That's quite a, a, a statement that chapter nine of uh, chapter nine of John. It is. It just blows me away every time I read it. It. I mean, this guy born blind and. Jesus just puts dirt in his eyes with some spittle and he says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Remember I said, sometimes what God's going to tell you to do is hard. You know, the guy could have said, what? Are you crazy? But what he did was he went and did exactly what Jesus had said. And that's what we need to learn to do. When God tells us something, gives us an instruction, be it in the written word or by revelation, it is up to us to just go do what he says. It's not our job to make assessments or judgments. It's up to us to do it. Nike used to have, who was it? Nike used to have that great commercial, just do it. You know, that's what it is with God. Just do it. You don't need instruction, a lot of instruction. Just do what the word says or do what God says. So, Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we can trust and believe in you. We can take those promises you've given us. 
whether they're little promises or big promises, and we can know that those promises will all be fulfilled at some point in our lives, if not in this life, after we've been gathered together and have those perfect bodies. And Lord, I just thank you for Don and Chris. I just thank you for their stands on your word. I just thank you that you watch over Tim for Don and his family. And with Chris, I thank you for her husband, um, Charlie. Charlie, right? Chuck. Chuck. Okay. Chuck. And I, I Christine, why don't you pray for him? Because I know he's going through some stuff at work and you would know more about it than I would. Yeah, you're calling on me? Yeah. Just go ahead and okay. Dad, I thank you for Chuck, and I lift him up to you. I thank you for the pressure being relieved from him, that he can actually enjoy his job and not be under so much pressure. And I thank you for his time being well spent so that he has the answers to give to his clients when he needs it. And I'll lift this up to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All Amen. right, everybody. So we're going to head on over to the green room, which means we're going to stay here and you're going to go away. So we'll see you in a few. Okay. Uh, Sorry about that, Don. I thought you were calling on your wife. No. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Christine. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, my wife. I, I asked her before we got married, when we were wild ambassadors, do you want to be called Chris or Christine? She told me Christine, because that's my name. I'm used to Christine. I, the only time I got only time I got my full name is when I was in the doghouse. So <laughs> you say Preston, I get, you know, uh oh. <laughs> what did I do now? <laughs> yeah. For Just me one it of those was automatic reactions. For me, it was Donald Ernest. I knew I was in trouble then. Oh, you know how much trouble you're in by how much your name you hear. Yeah. Oh, you heard the second name. You were in dire straits. Mm -hmm. You were you dead were in big trouble. That was the only way you got to learn what your middle name was. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we all know what our middle name is quite well, right? Right. Unfortunately, we were all kids once. Uh, and we went through that with the women's chat because Facebook puts your your full name on the front, you know, on, on each thing that you post. And so everybody was answering by putting my full name in and I, I finally had to say, please don't do that. <laughs> I feel like I'm in trouble all the time. <laughs> Well, what I what they called me when I wasn't in trouble is actually maybe worse. <laughs> it was always Donnie. <laughs> oh, Donnie! You go through that, Doc. Yep. Yeah. It was. You don't like it. You hate that. There are three people who I, there are just a very few people who I will let call me Donnie at this point. Christine's brother is one. My brother and sisters are the others. I really never got off on the name Donnie. I prefer Don or Donald or Hey You. <laughs> it used, to me. It used to bother me, but it doesn't bother me anymore. Yeah. I get, like, whatever. I mean, well, at this point, with my stand in the word, I've softened up a little bit. And, you know, if somebody wanted to call me Donnie, I'd, well, what the heck? Sometimes I've even thought maybe even using the word Donnie. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, in honor of Donnie Fugit. <laughs> yeah. Neither one of you look like a Donnie to me. Oh, really? <laughs> mm -mm. Well, when I was young, I was cute. The dimples. Hair. I hate yeah. to tell you, Don, they're still there. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I know. They're still there. But when I was younger, they were much more pronounced. <laughs> and I had the cutest little smile. And, mm -hmm. and I say that to my sisters, and they'll just look at me and they say, Yeah, what happened to you? <laughs> you used oh, to be cute. That's nasty. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know what they mean, and I just take it in good humor. Oh, excuse me. I don't have to get up early to go to the doctor and get pinned. Yeah. Yep. Pinned? Right. Every time I go. Ah, one stick. One stick. Well, it, they could take six vials from that one stick, and right. you'd only see the one stick. Yeah. But today you only took one vial. You just went to one stick, though. You yeah. know, they get around. Mm. Well, see, that's because I'm on a blood thinner, and they have to keep checking it. Mm -hmm. This blood thinner, I found out what it really is. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's actually mm -hmm. made from the same stuff they make rat poison from. Yeah, you just don't want to get quite as much. As yeah. You, <laughs> you want a much smaller dosage. <laughs> yeah but you see it's funny when i went into when i was at brookhaven that was a year ago already can yeah. you believe that yeah. um when i was at brookhaven i was either in bed or in a wheelchair i wasn't moving around so they had to it changed it changes what you need is a dosage on this stuff so i went from five milligrams down to one milligram and ever since I'd gotten home from uh, Green from Brookhaven, we've been trying to fix my dosage because it was my readings were way too hot, way too low. You know, like John had a, I mentioned to you guys, John had a under four on his hemoglobin. Well, this should be two point on a, the IRN. It's a, it measures, I think, the iron in your blood. And um, it it's supposed to be around two. And I was down at one half, 0.5 in this reading, and they couldn't figure it out. And then I finally realized that I was still on the dosage that they had given me at Brookhaven when I was either in bed or in a wheelchair makes a big difference so it's improved yeah so now that we got it right it's going good again but he has yeah. to he has to take blood every time i go there and check it yes how often do you go every two weeks two Ew. Weeks. and we might go up to a month if it, if it stays this consistent, he may go up to a month. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good goal. Yeah, it's a good thing to believe for. Put that out with prayer warriors, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got the dosage right, and we got my meds back to the point where everything seems to be working again. Um, I come on a water pill and potassium, and if you go on a water pill, you got to go on potassium because you pee away all your potassium. <laughs> <laughs> I guess eating a whole bunch of bananas didn't cut it, huh? Um, whenever I get eat a banana, it has a bad reaction. I get constipated for three or four days. Ooh, really? Uh, yeah. Don't know why. Well, don't eat bananas. Right. They don't like you. No. When I was living in Ohio, I could eat them because mm -hmm. I remember on Saturday afternoons, we used to have those uh, peanut butter, banana, honey, and um, wheat germ sandwiches. Those were so good. They With sound good. Oh, didn't they have, we have uh, like fruit salad? Yeah, Was we it, had fruit salads and, and yogurt. Yeah. And your grapes and walnuts. Yeah. That was good. 
sort of like a Waldorf salad. Yeah, only it was fruit. Yeah, yep. all fruit and nuts. You guys are making me hungry. Come on, I'm on a diet. <laughs> Give me a break, huh? I'd forgotten all about the fruit salad. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I used to think about with Chandra, the fruit and nuts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why she was the fruit and nuts, because really sweet. And I miss Chandra. I haven't seen her for a while. I talked to her on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. Um, she must be busy because she's not on Facebook much either. Yeah, she said she's a, you know, she's, she's got things <coughs> with her husband and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the kids the, and the dog. and Getting acclimated to the new environment, I'm sure, is a lot of it. Yeah. So... That, you know, she can't get here because of the move, mm -hmm. because it's two hours earlier now. Or, Her yeah, two clocks are all weird. <laughs> uh, and uh, so she's right in the middle of uh, all kinds of activity. Mm -hmm. I've talked to her about it and said, you know, I understand why you're not making it. But, you know, if you can, you're still more than welcome to come. Absolutely. Please come if you get the chance. And she said, yeah, she loves us all and wishes she could be here, but she's just got so many things going on that it's really, really hard for her. Yeah. You know, if you guys want to talk to her on Facebook, just leave her a message. She'll talk mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. She doesn't think we're, she's better than us anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, we, I'm... Uh, She's in our little group chats every once in a while on there. Group message. Yeah. That way she can respond when she can, which is yeah. the beauty of it. So. Yeah, that's the nice thing about that. She can at least respond. Yeah. And she's uh, she's no longer running the social media for TLTF. Yeah. Christine's Botley's doing that, but she's helping. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't know if you get the uh, stuff that she posts on uh, Twitter, but I do. So I know she's posting on Twitter almost daily. So well, that's good. She's still active, but it's an, I'm very encouraged about. I hope she can get the, all this stuff worked out with her family. <laughs> so either of you have anything interesting this, from this week yeah it's a pretty boring week yeah. <laughs> i guess it has been to, for us too yeah we just finished up a, a six-week bible study on the armor of god cool which is it was it was very good well, i still gotta go back to once a week. <laughs> yeah, I gotta How's go back your group to going, Don? Huh? I was Don. I was asking Don how his group was going. Oh. Weren't you involved with a, a women's fellowship? Women's yeah. fellowship, yeah. I uh, invaded the women's fellowship, and they they uh, said I could keep coming, and they said. We may have uh, references to girls and that kind of stuff, but just change the word girls to guys. When those they don't make you sit in the corner? <laughs> no, I'm the, the AV guy, the audio video guy. I'm the only uh, one that's going to work the DVD player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we. We watch a little half hour blurb on the DVD player. And every now and then, you know, we watch movies. I saw the uh, War Room. We watched. That's the, a great movie. And God's Not Dead. We watched both of those. Mm -hmm. The War yeah. Room, I haven't seen, and I really want to. The War Room is very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's one other one that's supposed to be really good. Mm -hmm. The. Uh, They've seen the Giants. Uh, I think it only has a one word title. Hell and Mr. Fudge. No, I, I've seen that. Okay. Many times. Fireproof? 
fireproof? Maybe. No, it's, it's, it wasn't fireproof. That's the Chris, whatever his name is. The guy from, yeah, the kid, the kid from uh, Family Matters or something, something like that. I'm mentally going through the list of the movies from that that the director did. Yeah, the same guy directed them. Yeah. Well, I'll give you guys a recommendation. If you haven't seen it, and you can, watch the Jerusalem Countdown. Oh, really? Okay. That is a, I have seen it. Yeah, it's an, I thought it was an excellent movie. Mm -hmm. Now, that just came out, didn't it? No, that's been out for years. Oh, okay. It, Chris, what did you think of it? It was a little confusing. I had to watch it a second time to, to finally get it, you know, to yeah. get all of it. it. It's really something. I like God is not dead better. Mm -hmm. You know, John was originally supposed to be in that movie. Yeah, was he were... really? Yeah, but they decided to not put him in for some reason. Mm -hmm. You would. Maybe he, they wanted him to be the bad guy, and he didn't want to be the bad guy. <laughs> Maybe he was too handsome. <laughs> too nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was, Don, I didn't, you weren't here, but I was telling uh, Chris that uh, I was accused of had, having one-dimensional thinking this week okay yeah i don't get that either <laughs> and i asked him what do you mean by that i don't even understand what that is and they said oh well you have to consider other points of view and consider all the intellectual stuff and well we do i do i consider it you mean they're accusing you of, of having like tunnel vision yeah, basically. Okay. And well, I, I think that's a good thing. In, if your tunnel vision is for the word, I think it's a good yeah. thing. I, oh, I think it was regarding that uh, September 23rd uh, rapture thing. Yeah, it was in regard, for one person, it was in regards to that. And mm -hmm. for this other person, <sighs> They had they had some situations going on in their life, and I just made a comment on them that, you know, and then she said, "Don't get one dimensional in your thinking. Don't think of only one thing. You got to think about all this other stuff." And okay, yeah. So why are they coming to you and asking for? Well, they, they didn't. They just asked a general question oh, okay. on Facebook. You know how people say, "Well." This and this and this happen. What do you guys think? Yeah, and they so really I, want to know what you think. They will just want an opportunity to say what they think. Right. And, Obviously, you, know, you didn't say what they wanted to hear. That's quite true. Mm -hmm. And what I said, I was trying to be very encouraging to this person, saying, right on for you. Mm -hmm. And they come back with this, you know. So I said, okay, I get to. You know, I'll just not comment on your stuff anymore. <laughs> you know, unless it's, you know. A, unless you agree with them. <laughs> yeah, unless I agree with them, I won't comment. Okay. And in fact, I didn't disagree with her. I was just pointing out additional <laughs> information. <laughs> Well, you can't get upset with what they say on, on Facebook because somebody is going to be unhappy about, about anything Everything. you say. Yeah, you're never going to. I'm not worried about it because I know that I'm not going to please. In fact, I probably insult more people with my beliefs than I make friends with. I'm starting to wonder if that's not a good thing. Well, I know that at least. 
Jesus Christ said, they hate me and they will hate you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I you posted know. a song uh, uh, on Facebook that really blessed me. It was a video. And I posted it on there, shared it with everybody. And I got somebody sending me a, a, um, a Facebook message. It was an email message. They tried to sound like Facebook security. Yeah. But you could tell it wasn't. And they were telling me that it was offensive and that I was out of line putting it on there and that if I continued to do things like that, my account would be pulled and closed. And, you know, in other words, I was going to be crucified. Yeah. And I thought, and, yeah. And you just put a song on there? Yeah. Take a hike, Bozo. Unbelievable. Do they really think that that's going to shut us up? <laughs> they might be stupid enough to think that. If they don't know us real well. we got the greatest thing going in life. Amen. Why do you want to shut up about it? You don't let these idiot people make you quiet. You want to share it with people. Yeah. There are some who want to hear it. Mm -hmm. It's like that last verse I read. Because you say you, what was it? Basically, Jesus Christ is saying to the uh, Pharisees, because you think you're right, you're still guilty. <laughs> you know, oh, I don't want to be guilty. I don't want him looking at me and saying, you're guilty. <laughs> but he was saying that to the Pharisees. Yeah. You know, he said a lot of things to the Pharisees that they would understand. Yeah. You know, not necessarily because it was, you know, the actual way things were. Yeah. But it was uh, the way they thought things were. Well, oh. so he would relate to them on the plane that are on a level that they would understand. Even the Pharisees believed in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of said that tonight. I was altogether born in sin, and you preach to us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody should. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Nothing new under the sun? Yeah. That's in the Bible somewhere. Yeah. yeah. The Reincarnation was around then, and it's around now. Yeah. What is all? Hey, there's, there's a lot of things in the Bible that people really don't understand because they don't understand the, the general knowledge that was available and the customs. Mm -hmm. Like um, sometimes go through um, Bob Wasong's teachings and you will pick up some really interesting information mm -hmm. about what they believed back then. Like they believed the earth was flat, for one thing. Yeah, and it's course, okay. about 520 years or so that people have believed the world is round. Yeah. I mean, when you think of it, that's a, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, that's you know what gets me all this stuff that's going on about racism. You know, this person was, like, hey, back when uh, they were, what's his name, uh, the guy who had his kid kidnapped. Um. Who? Lindbergh. Lindbergh. Oh, he was kidding. a racist. And people, guess what? There were a lot of people who were racist back then. Mm -hmm. And it's these people who talk about slaves in the Bible. 
and what they could do to their slaves. Guess what? That was the norm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it was right, but that's Doesn't what mean it was. Yeah. You have and, to yeah. understand the people based it on the culture in which they live. Right. You have to look at it that way always, and people don't. Mm -hmm. And then to accuse us, or for anyone to accuse someone today of thinking the way that people thought back then is just wrong. It's not yeah. true. Yeah. But they don't want to listen to that, so. Yeah. The people who bring that sort of stuff up aren't going to hear you anyway. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Promoting an agenda that they can live off of. Yeah. All right. Mickey's big hand is getting close to the six. So I know you got to work tomorrow, Don. So we're going to call an end to it. So, everyone, you've now sat through fellowship after hours. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> So we'll see you next week. Have a good week and may the Lord keep you all blessed and big time. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You need lots of brownies. <laughs> right. And if I could do brownies? it. Brownies? Yeah, I'm I, foreknowledge. I have foreknowledge. I wonder if I could do it just a second. I want to try one thing quickly before we uh, go. Uh, I don't know if I can do this. No, it won't work. It won't work. Yeah. I was going to try and bring up Claudette. Uh. Mm -hmm. Oh, send I, me the link to that uh, PFAL. I thought I invited you. You might have. I just lost it. Okay, I'll invite you again. Chris, are you at that page? Pardon me? Uh, the PFL, PFL class page. Mm, do I? Dr. Werewolf on it. Have I watched it? I'll, no, have you been invited? I'll invite you there. I'm not sure if I have or not because remember I told you. I need to explain to you. The reason I get paranoid about getting the link is because everything i've put you in four times <laughs> telling hotmail this is someone that i i know this is someone who's safe and every single time every message that comes from you goes into my junk mail yeah oh everyone i, I, I put you in four times i used to have hotmail i know it goes on there it's infuriating it and then i get mail coming into my inbox about tire rotations you know come in and have your tires rotated you know oh and i don't I, know who that is i can talk that i used to get them for breast enlargement <laughs> oh i hope you didn't take advantage of it <laughs> no, <I didn't. laughs> Pass it on. <laughs> all right folks enough of our insanity we'll see you next